I'm really happy with my experience with my myectomy and my travalve repair. Um, I made the right choice by going to a center of excellence, which is the first thing you should be thinking about. And then from there, um, I saw doc- for me, I saw Dr. Marin up at Tufts. We came to the conclusion at my very first exam um, that I needed the myectomy. So the myectomy is done to remove the uh, excess tissue from the septum that is causing an obstruction to the outflow tract to allow the blood to go to the rest of the body. Uh, for me, it was something that was done in order to help me um, kind of have a more normal uh, life and to try to help take load off of my heart from the obstruction. I didn't have many problems with HCM for a number of years after I was diagnosed. And <clears throat> then suddenly I um, um, had some drama. I was traveling overseas and passed out four times one night. Um, and um, I was admitted to a hospital there and they did an echo and found that my resting gradient was um, 120. It had previously been always about 20. Um, so they said, uh, go home. and. Uh, Uh, go home and get treatment. You probably need a myectomy. Nobody in this country does them. Um, So my own local cardiologist did his own echo and said I needed a myectomy as well. Um, So uh, we set a date for me to fly up to Cleveland a week later. So I went to the Cleveland Clinic and underwent uh, two days, uh, a battery of tests. Um, Probably concluded, I think, on a Tuesday. Well, that Friday late afternoon, I got a call from the cardiologist at Cleveland Clinic uh, telling me that um, he and the other cardiologists had round tabled my uh, test results. And while they thought that uh, treating this condition with, with medicines is a possibility, they were uh, unanimous in recommending that I undergo a septal myectomy. They felt that the output of uh, blood from my left ventricle was probably no more than about a sixth of what it should be. And um, hearing that was good enough for me. And roughly two months later, I was at the Cleveland Clinic undergoing a septal myectomy. After a lot of time trying a lot of different medications, I realized that the obstruction was not going to go away on its own. And Dr. Battle told me that either I could uh, live with it or I could try surgery. So I asked him to refer me to the Mayo Clinic because uh, I had learned through the HCMA that a high volume center is the place to go. Uh, They called me a few days later, uh, scheduled my appointment for three months from then and uh, took care of all the arrangements. The fainting spells, as they became more more prevalent and uh, catching my breath, there was just no more medication that was able to uh, substantiate uh, the symptom, hold the symptoms where, where we needed them. The myectomy to me seemed to be like a one and done, go in, get it cut out, and then go ahead and live your life. It, it was a little bit of a concern. I can't lie and tell somebody that it's not going to weigh on your head. They're going to go in, they're going to split open the rib cage uh, and, and cut into your heart and then cut out a piece of your heart. Uh, at that point, I was so bad, frankly, if they didn't do it, I was going to take a knife and do it myself. It got to be to the point where I couldn't live the way I was living. It was scary. It was a life event. Um, I'm a person who soaks up knowledge. So I got as much information as possible. Uh, I don't like to go into things not knowing. So I knew every detail about it. I traveled to Boston from New York and had my surgery with Dr. Rastegar. I spent four or five days uh, in the hospital and came home right at the beginning of COVID. So when I got home, I was lucky enough to have my wife and children at home during my recuperation, which wasn't fun, but bearable. And I noticed I, I um, explained it as I took baby steps every day. And one day I turned around a few weeks later and I realized how far in my recovery I'd become. And I never looked back from that day. My life has changed since my surgery. The surgery itself was a real surprise to me. I'd 
never been so weakened uh, and helpless in my life. And um, I had a fair number of complications. Um, I had uh, some internal bleeding the night of the surgery, um, uh, started AFib a few days later, and then uh, developed a pulmonary effusion. Um, and I wound up being in the hospital there for nine days. Um, they sent me home though at, after that. And uh, a few weeks later, I had another hospitalization for um, a very large pulmonary effusion. And uh, I remember at one point uh, kind of whining to my cardiologist that, you know, I kept having these complications and I was sort of depressed about all this. And he just looked at me and very kindly said, and very firmly said, um, look, all these things are things we know how to fix and you will get better. Um, and um, he was right. Um, I actually wound up recovering pretty much on schedule. Um, by about six weeks, I felt really good. Um, and um, I've never looked back. Looking back at it, it was not as bad as I feared at all. I think it was the nerves going into the surgery. But then once I got there in the morning and they moved me back to prep, I just knew I was in the right place at the Cleveland Clinic. And I knew Dr. Smadira was one of the best surgeons for this surgery. And everything went fine. It wasn't fun by any means, but it's pretty unbelievable to think that you could go in, have your heart cut open or your chest both open, uh, be on, have a machine take over your life for a while while they go in and take out an obstruction in your heart. And I was back home within a week and recovery was good. I would, I would definitely do it again in a heartbeat if I had to. They took great care of me in the hospital. Um, I don't remember a lot of my stay, um, but I immediately could feel a difference um, after I was up and started walking. And it's, it's made a huge difference in my life. I'm able to uh, walk uh, around my neighborhood. I'm able to take my daughter to the playgrounds, go out for walks with my family. And uh, I don't feel lightheaded. I don't feel shortness of breath. Um, you know, the only time I really feel um, unusual or short of breath at all is if I'm um, going up a steep hill, something that would probably happen to most people. Fortunately, the recuperation period is not that bad. Um, I would say the five days in the hospital were a little uncomfortable. Um, I've had open heart twice now, and it, 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 it followed the same pattern, a burning sensation in your sternum for probably the first two days. And then after that, it was a, it was an achiness. Um, I think I had some Percocet for a few days. And by the time I was released on day five, I was taking Tylenol. Now everyone's experience with pain is different. Um, mine uh, wasn't that bad. Uh, I was walking around the block two days after I got home and within a week um, walking the whole neighborhood and then by a month riding my bicycle. So I hope everyone else's experience is as good as mine. Uh, the myectomy itself was, was several hours, a few hours. Um, they tell you to wait six weeks. You return to work, work six weeks after the myectomy. I was back in work in six days. Um, I was released from the hospital in four days. I could have been out in three. Um, I had no limitations. Leaving the hospital, I, I was like 100% again. Um, I did stairs. I bent over. I was uh, working out again in a few a few weeks, I think it was like two weeks I was working out again. Um, it was a game changer. Best thing I ever did. I was terrified going in. The surgeons, the hospital, everything that they were just beyond anything I could have hoped for. The re I will not say the recovery was easy. Uh, I remember being at home for six weeks with a uh, physical therapy coming to the house. I remember having to sit in the back of the car because it was too dangerous to sit in the front of the car, I guess because of airbags, whatever. But I will be grateful for it forever and ever.